I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another in our Sex Magic podcast series um, here on BDSM United. Um, play piercings can be a way to physically sink a spell into another human being, directly into the inner part of their aura. To do this, take the needle and energize it so as to give an astral twin. The second needle of energy is then filled with some kind of intent towards a particular goal and then put under the skin of the bottom. Then the top carefully separated the two and draws out the physical needle, leaving the energy twin in place. At this point, you can go one of two ways. You can rub the energy needle in and deliberately blur its boundary, which is a good thing if it's going to be permanent, because otherwise having that astral needle in there can give shooting pains for days or weeks afterwards until it's absorbed properly. Another option is to make the spell temporary. In this case, just wait a couple of days, insert a needle into the same place, meld the two, and pull the whole shebang out. If, if you can't find it, if it's sunk in and become one with your submissive's astral body, that likely means that there was something about that spell that they really needed, or at least deeply desired on some level. And their deep mind took it in and made it permanent. This was a working uh, to do along with an energy ma manipulation to do along with needle play. You can also do it where you're simulating needle play. Uh, it doesn't have to be actual physical needles put in. You can inject the intent of the goal uh, in with the astral needles by themselves. The next working is called a psychic leash. The dominant partner stretches a piece of their energy out from their own body and attaches it to the astral body of the submissive partner. This is different from the strong cord created by a couple who do sex magic together, as the psychic leash is temporary and can be removed. You'll probably want to start with an actual leash running from the dominant's body to the submissive's body. Although some dominants may object to the idea, it's best to tie it onto both people while the exercise is being set up. The dominant partner should run the energy down the leash and twine it into some chakra of the bottoms. I suggest that the lower two chakras for those who are playing casually. The sh third chakra works well for people in a full-time DS relationship as it deals with the will. The heart chakra should only be used if the couple is also emotionally and romantically involved as well as physically. Don't use the throat chakra as it causes strangling feelings or the head chakra because it can cause headaches. For more on the chakras and the chakra system, check out our previous podcast on the topic called the chakra system. You can find that in the archives. Once the leash is attached, the physical leash is removed from it and the bond is there. From this point on, the bottom will have to stay within a certain physical proximity of the top or they will begin to feel uncomfortable. Using the lower three, three chakras often gives a feeling of vague nausea or butterflies in the stomach or a belly dropping worry if the top gets out of their sight. Using the heart chakra will create flutterings and palpitations. The bottom, of course, needs to be completely informed of what's happening and be able to give their consent. Where a psychic leash is useful is generally at crowded parties, where a real leash would tangle around other people and become an obstacle. People can pass through the psychic leash without much of a problem, although someone standing directly in its path for an extended period of time will trigger feelings of discomfort. 
After you're done, the top should deliberately remove the leash from the bottom's chakras. Don't leave this as a permanent thing, even if you live together 24-7. You may not always want to be joined at the hip. You may want to go to the bathroom alone, for example, or leave to go to your job. Leaving a psychic leash attached for too long can set it, resulting in a panic attack for the bottom when it comes off. At the very least, remove it before falling asleep so it won't get set. As with all things, energy work on bottoms should be done only with informed consent. That means that they should be aware of the possible problems so that they can let the top know if something is going wrong. Informed consent also implies not doing it on people who don't believe in all this energy stuff, but will nod their head and uh, smile in order to please the dominant partner. The this is a problem when magicians play with non-magicians, or at least with people who don't share the same worldview. Please be ethical and be safe. Doing energy work on someone who doesn't really understand what's going on can make them think that they're crazy, and this is not the way to treat someone who is willing to be vulnerable to you. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for listening to this uh, BDSM United podcast in our exercises and sex magic podcast series. You can find all of our resources at www.bdsmunited.com. And we created this series because a lot of books and resources tell you that sex magic exists. But there's very few that tell you how to practically do sex magic. Uh, they don't tell you the rituals. They don't tell you the invocation ceremonies. The, they don't tell you the practices or exercises that you can actually do. And we wanted to uh, fill that gap with these things. Uh, these are all some really good education to help form a more intimate connection between uh, people in power exchange relationships and within top and by tops and bottoms within play scenes. Uh, again, I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a joy talking with you, and I'll talk with you again soon.